By doing things that are considered underhanded, unethical, unfaithful, or downright inhuman, players can be subjected to some pretty humbling punishments. These range from an instant game over, to a soul-crushing setback, to a permanent game-changing alteration that never goes away. As killing is usually the bread and butter of video games, this list won't include any punishments for murder, especially considering that a common solution to these problems is even more murder. Rest assured, however, there are plenty of other ways to flex your delinquent muscles in video games, and not all of them have you walking away scot-free. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 brutal video game punishments for breaking the law. Number 10. Death by Desecration, Salt and Sanctuary, 2016. Sanctuaries are the much appreciated safe havens in the fiendishly challenging Metroidvania adventure Salt and Sanctuary, and claiming them in the name of your creed will grant you a permanent place of respite away from the island's hideous inhabitants. Some of them belong to a creed you're not a part of, however, and while they'll still replenish your healing items and allow you to level up, you don't get the full benefit unless that sanctuary is allowed to become yours. There's a good way to do this and a bad way, and with the bad way being much more accessible, the curious and or evil player will not hesitate to give it a whirl. Using a stained page at the altar of a sanctuary will desecrate the idol placed there, summoning legions of powerful warriors that will swiftly turn you into a pile of salted caramel. It is possible to fight them off though if you're a high enough level, and players who are rotten to the core will know that desecrating a sanctuary leads to some particularly treacherous hidden content. But the more likely outcome here is that curiosity got the better of you, and now the game is gonna make sure you pay for your transgressions. Number 9. Blackmail Dr. Troy, Fallout 2, 1998 a post-apocalyptic world sure does bring out the worst in people, and in the Fallout series, most of the folk you come across are gonna be a tad on the mental side. Even when their dispositions seem pretty benign, double-crossing them is generally not a great idea if you want things to end well for you or your character. Dr. Troy is the chief physician in Vault City, and the player can come to him anytime to restore their health or remove the buildup of radiation. After meeting with him, he'll ask you to bring him a sample of the dubious performance enhancer Jet for undisclosed reasons. If drug smuggling isn't sketchy enough for you, you can then blackmail the mysterious doctor, threatening to turn him in unless he pays you a huge amount of money a month for your silence. He'll begrudgingly agree, making you think you've just got away with the steal of a lifetime. That is, until you go back to him seeking medical attention. Did you really think he was going to forget something like that? As he injects you with sodium triethylene and tells you you have 10 seconds to live, you'll have your answer. And may just feel remorse for that last moment before your body literally explodes into beautifully rendered viscera. Number 8. Goodbye Again Companion Cube, Portal 2, 2011 while you're stuck miles underground in the bowels of Aperture Science's abandoned test facilities, GLaDOS's word is the law. At least that's how she wants you to see it, and since protagonist Shell's permanent silence makes her no stranger to passive aggressiveness, what's to stop her from doing something a little more deliberate? One of the game's earliest levels marks the return of the beloved weighted companion cube, a heart pattern box you grew strangely attached to in your first outing. Predicting the same thing will happen here, GLaDOS warns you against trying to smuggle it out of the test area, which is possible this time by the broken emancipation grill that would normally have disintegrated it. If you're sneaky about it, it's possible to lift the cube up to the final platform and walk towards the lift at the end. The moment definitely feels like you've successfully defied GLaDOS and outwitted the puzzle. Take another few steps, however, and your smugness will turn to utter despair as the cube floats out of your hands and fizzles away into nothing. While it doesn't affect the game going forwards, it definitely affects you as that horrifying scene is likely burned into your mind for the rest of your playthrough. Number 7. Revenge of the Lone Sharks, Saints Row, 2006 If you're gullible or desperate enough to take out a loan from some pretty obviously dodgy people, then you can expect them to come after you and get medieval on your ass if you don't pay up on time. That's just common sense. This is exactly what happens in the original Saints Row, where borrowing any amount of money from the firstborn loans company will give you a set number of days within which to return the loan. As the deadline draws near, two of the loan sharks, Mike and Dan, will badger you over the phone, repeatedly asking where their money is. 
tips. Ignore them until after the deadline has passed and all hell will be raised. Mike and Dan will pursue you relentlessly and the longer it goes on, the bigger and more destructive their efforts become. Now you can kill them, but until you pay off that loan, they'll just keep coming back to terrorize you into coughing up the cash. Number 6. Tarnished by Evil – Mega Man Legends 1997 The first fully realized 3D adventure in the Mega Man series, Mega Man Legends, is not without a wealth of new activities and secrets. But don't think you can just strut around the town doing anything you want, because many of your more undesirable actions have some pretty nasty consequences. If you're the type of player who'd rather be less of a Mega Man and more of a Mega Maniac, you're free to go about it in a few different ways. Is littering your thing? Find some bins and kick them over like there's no tomorrow. Fancy practicing some social skills? Go and be a general douche to everyone you meet. See a cute dog? Give it a punt across the screen for good measure. The more you do this, the more your character will literally start to darken in color. But perhaps these petty misdeeds aren't scratching your itch. If you want to go for the big one, you can stop a bank robbery, then choose to keep the stolen money for yourself. That one will turn you permanently ash black. It's not just a cosmetic punishment either, because in this state, you'll no longer be able to acquire certain power-ups or interact with certain NPCs. In short, you've snookered yourself, and all for a payout that really wasn't worth it. Number 5. Paltry Avengers – The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim 2011 Famously, the inhabitants of Skyrim have a zero-tolerance policy for messing with their stuff. Stealing anything from them will land you with a bounty on your head further down the road, and trying to sell them back things you've stolen from them only ends in tears. Even those who claim to have taken an arrow in the knee will pelt after you like Sonic on steroids. But there's one indiscretion that seems to ruffle their feathers far more than anything else, more accurately, the feathers of their livestock. If you happen to kill a single chicken in a populated area, whether accidentally or on purpose, the entire town will charge at you with knives, swords, and axes raised. You can kill them all if you really want to, but that'll just land you in hotter water later on, as well as rubbing yourself of many important vendors and NPCs. Sees. Talk about the overreaction of the century, sure, but the chicken is likely someone's property and you're damaging it. Then again, is it really punishable by death? It's not like they weren't eventually going to kill and eat it themselves anyway. Number 4. A Woman Scorned – Rune Factory Frontier 2008 the Harvest Moon series has peculiarly always been as much of a dating simulator as it has been a farming one, with the option to court and or marry any one of the potential love interests scattered across the town. Its spin-off Rune Factory features this just as prominently, and in 2008's Rune Factory Frontier, the stakes of these mechanics are raised in a pretty interesting way. It's difficult enough to choose between the various partners in the game, and even after finding a wife, the absolute players amongst you may suffer from a case of the wandering gaze. As such, you might then choose to go on a date with another of these ladies who are all madly interested in you by default, because of course they are. And you'd be doing this behind your wife's back. Inevitably, the missus shows up to see you being unfaithful and proceeds to lay the smack down on you in a very literal way. The encounter will leave you with one hit point and zero rune points, effectively robbing you of any chance of productivity for that whole day's cycle. And while cheating isn't exactly a crime, it should definitely leave you feeling like a bit of a scumbag, and a battered one at that. Number 3. Wrath of Kecleon – Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Series One of the most famous recurring features of the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series is the Kecleon Shop, which can appear randomly in almost any dungeon and will provide players with much needed health and food items. Kecleon is a very chirpy and upbeat individual, treating all customers with complete kindness and respect. The music changes as you step into his designated area, which doesn't immediately get your suspicions up, but it puts you very on edge if you know what can potentially go down here. Buying from him is as simple as collecting an item, then handing over the money once you step off the mat. If you use the item or simply refuse to pay, however, the color swap Pokemon will go completely off the rails. With every stat besides HP maxed out, multiple Kecleons will plague the entire rest of your time within the dungeon. They move at double speed and their attacks are almost always a one-hit KO. On top of that, his recruitment probability is minus 34%, making it impossible unless you can painstakingly claw that number up to 0.1. But honestly, if you experience this massacre and are insane enough to go back for more, there's probably no hope for you. Number 2. Forever a Thief – The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening 1993 
It's clear that very few games take kindly to stealing. In the real world, you'd be most likely fined or sentenced to a brief spell in prison if you were found guilty of shoplifting, but not in the Zelda universe, for shopkeepers are shown to take their work very, very seriously. In Link's Awakening, trying to take an item out of the shop in Mabe Mape? Maybe. Let me know down in the comments. Marbe Village will cause the shopkeeper to sternly remind you to pay for it. For the craftier player, there's a way to exit the shop without him seeing you, involving you doing a few circles around him so you can safely leave before he turns his head. Doing this will prompt a message to show up saying, guess what? You got it for free. Are you proud of yourself? It might spook you enough just to see your actions haven't gone unnoticed by the game, but when you boot it up the next time to see your save file is now permanently named Thief, you know you done screwed up. For the rest of your playthrough, everyone will refer to you this way, making for a pretty humiliating punishment all in all. And if you try to re-enter the shop you originally stole from, the shopkeeper will insta kill you each time with a bolt of lightning. You can bet that at least he was feeling proud of himself. Number 1. The Prison Server EverQuest 2 2004 You might think the worst possible punishment for errant players in an MMORPG is to ban them, but that doesn't stop them just making more characters. The creator of EverQuest 2 were way ahead of the curve in this regard, and devised a completely ingenious way to bring troublemakers to justice once and for all. Step out of line in this game and you'll receive a one-way ticket to the prison server of Drunda, a purpose-built world populated entirely by fellow cheaters, abusers, and general blights on the EverQuest community. Once you're in, there's no escape, and to even play the game from that point in requires a paid membership. In addition, you receive no customer support and can literally only play within the confines of the dark level you've been banished to. The developers really could not have made their disdain for disruptive users any more clear. Can you even imagine a penalty greater than being locked out of 99% of the game and forced to pay if you want to continue playing? I mean, maybe the inhabitants of Drunda have formed their own community by now, in which case more power to them, but knowing the weight of your past actions will hang over your severely limited playthrough, it's a perfect punishment.